Hello everybody, my name is Gavin Simon and it is day four of the ARC Forum and welcome back to the Sustainability Podcast. Today I am joined with Riley Presnell. Thank you so much for joining me today. Riley, uh, tell me who you are, what your background is, and your experience with Nalco Water. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, I have been with Nalco Water for about 18 months now, nice. um, specifically working at, in our global marketing team in our downstream division, so refining and petrochemical plants. Um, I work in sustainability and water programs. So um, I, my background is I have an MBA and a master's in environmental engineering. I studied biology in undergrad, so I had an interesting journey to, to Ecolab, but um, it's a really interesting company and something a company that puts sustainability first and was yeah. kind of working in sustainability before it was a cool word, right? With helping customers conserve water and energy, so I was really drawn to just the company because of its mission. Nice. I think it's interesting that you said that you had a, uh, an interesting um, time to get to Nalco Water because you know what? Uh, I think the biggest thing I've learned since graduating college is there's no streamline. There's no. Anytime you think that you have it figured out, you don't have it figured out, <laughs> and. Uh, can you express a little bit about your experience uh, getting your MBA in environmental engineering and maybe that track from college to Nalco or maybe your experience with applying to jobs, interviews? Can you just touch upon that? Yeah. Um, well, I'll start with kind of at the beginning when I was in college, I worked at, at an environmental engineering firm and I worked on a project that was funded by the DOE looking at algae wastewater treatment and then harvesting that algae to produce biofuel. Right. So I was working, I studied biology, but I was working in environmental engineering. And at the school that I went to, Cal Poly, you declared your major upon applying. So right. and <clears throat> it didn't make sense for me to switch my major. So I thought I would go back to get a master's. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed that role. I really enjoyed working in research for about, I mean, I stayed after I graduated for about a year. Okay, nice. Um, but I wanted to take that opportunity of being young and not really having commitments to do something I had always wanted to do, yeah. which was the Peace Corps. Okay, so nice. I applied to the Peace Corps and went to Panama. Um, amazing. A really amazing opportunity. I worked as a water sanitation and hygiene education volunteer. I was in a very rural community um, like of about 300 people, um, and they asked for a volunteer because they were drinking water out of a stream, and they wanted okay. to have a system put in and work with somebody that you know had expertise in that to help them you know have safe drinking water for their community. Um, and so that was a really unique experience and something that taught me while I was there on the importance of beyond just understanding like a technical design of like an aqueduct or something like that, for example, is understanding the sustainability of it in a social aspect and an economic aspect. So right. that's when I kind of understood like I can design, I can help them design the perfect system like that I think is perfect, but if they're not able to maintain it, it's not going to work in right. the long term. So it's not sustainable. And so that's what kind of sparked me to add the MBA because I wanted to understand more about like meeting the customer where they are and having kind of like the business understanding of economics and needs to then create a system that's exactly what they want. Right. So um, that's what led me to, I went to Georgia Tech um, and they had a really great dual degree program between environmental engineering masters and, and the MBA. And from there, I found Ecolab uh, through the internship program. So, oh, wow. Yeah, and I think the way that I found Ecolab was just knowing that my passion was water. Right. And looking for internships and positions and companies that w were centered around water and sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, and then using networking to actually get the first connection um, for my my That's amazing. I, I can definitely see the, uh, it's not so invisible. I can see the thread from the research, the Peace Corps, and then Nalco. Like I can see the water and sustainability thread, which is amazing. And also your comment about uh, implementing a sustainability process or a project in a, in a community. And yeah, I, me as an outsider might believe this is the perfect system for you. I know it will work and so on and so forth, but that's that's your 
uh, perspective. Like you're only going to be there for a blank amount of months. You need to in- make sure that this community will be able to uh, produce and be a self-regulating uh, community to able to. While you're not there, that system still needs to be working and in place. And I think that goes on like, moving forward to even businesses and all of these sustainability technologies that might seem super shiny. And you have, um, you know, somebody c- approaches you and tries to sell you this uh, technology, and like it's almost like a car salesman. Like this, they sell you the car and then they they disappear for you, like for life. And maybe your car breaks down or something like that. The same thing with sustainable technology. I think. Un- truly understanding uh, the sustainability technology before implementing it within your company is essential because you want to be able to have that full impact because you're paying for it. And being able to have that full impact and uh, implementing these processes in place within your organization when having a new technology is essential because you want it, you want it to outlive you and be able to share it with your other employees and coworkers and maybe even other locations as well. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I would add just that not only understanding the technology from as the customer, but also as the provider understanding the customer, right. what they really need and how they're going to be able to you know, implement that and what their true goals are. Um, because you know sustainability may not be their top goal, right. but there can be options to, to meet both their goal and sustainability so Mm -hmm. i i I, that's been a common thread as well here at at the arc forum there's been a lot of conversations of operational efficiency energy efficiency uh decrease in resource usage which in the end uh, comes out to sustainability success and just achieving a co2 reduction and an energy resource uh, reduction. So you've come to ARC and your colleague, Anne Emerson, she spoke during my emerging technology session yesterday and discussed a little bit about the climate intelligence product. Can you just dive into uh, what this product is and what the value brings to companies and organizations? Yeah, I can. So climate intelligence, I think, is it's almost like a unicorn. It's it's having your cake and eating it too okay. because it's, it's a digital tool um, that we partnered with Siemens to, to create, and it is a digital twin on the utility system, so steam and cooling. So it allows us to uh, you know, create a digital twin of that system and see where the inefficiencies are, and it makes suggestions on adjustments to set points that can then lower energy usage, so right. you know, that would decrease CO2 emissions. You know, improve the efficiency of the cooling system, so that can help to increase production. Um, so it really is allowing uh, the user to uh, pick what they want out of it. So reducing CO two is going to be inherent in making mm-hmm. it more efficient, but they can choose whether they want to keep that same production and then reduce their full CO two total CO two emissions, okay. or if they want to just reduce their CO two intensity, increasing production and uh, keeping CO2 at the same. So mm. um, it's a really, really unique product. And as Nalco Water Ecolab has been working with customers on their water systems for a really long time. Yeah. So having a tool like this kind of takes it to the next level of beyond just treating your water system and providing chemistry, also like now impacting the your process and right. helping you reach your, your business goals. Um, and I think that is something that is business sustainable, I guess. Like mm-hmm. it makes business sense yes. while being environmentally beneficial. Right. I think uh, there was a, a word used this morning, I'm obviously a com- uh, complacency. And I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, oh these people are being complacent. Uh, but sometimes when you are redundant in your everyday tasks and processes and you know you go to you go to work and it's like monday through friday blah 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 blah. you're just normal it's like all regular it's all the same but having something come in and kind of review have a second pair of eyes or a third pair of eyes on your daily processes that you find so normal but then being able to have something additional that provides a different perspective and gives you that intelligent data regarding um where you could uh, become more efficient in your processes. I think that's essential because, you know, sometimes we all need a little help. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like we're not all perfect. And I think 
it kind of bridges that gap. And I'm not saying that everybody has to be perfect, but this at least helps you in a in an incremental way. And over time, it'll uh, come out to a, a better success in the end of the day. Yeah, and I think you know, <clears throat> a refinery, a petrochemical plant, they're very complicated systems. Yeah. Like, there's no way that one person knows exactly which set points to make right. because that's just that's impossible. Like, yeah. A human can't do that. So using data to use a computer to do that is is i mean that's that makes sense let's work smarter not harder yeah exactly <laughs> it makes sense so uh, moving on with the conversation around how do you see how do you see digital transformation and sustainability progressing together i think we here at arc we always talk about digital transformation and digitalization of systems so where do you think the sustainability point how does sustainability and digital transformation work together yeah, I think that's something I've heard a lot this week too. Is is they're linked? They are yeah. going to be together always. And I think, like just from the start, making a system that's existing more efficient, right. like we are going to need digital tools to do that. Right. Where there's no way that we can, you know, totally optimize a, a system without having the digital tools and, and to analyze and contextualize the data. So um, I see that as like the first step of the link. I also see a digital tool being really useful in picking different projects within that plant, you know, opportunities for retrofit or improvements that can help with making operations more sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I also think as we're looking at new markets like hydrogen, carbon capture, right. These are new technologies, new builds that are, you know, we're going to need digital tools to monitor because we don't have the domain knowledge and people as mm -hmm. much to, to make sure that they operate effectively. So I think digital will be, digital tools will be very linked in those, in those new scenarios yeah. too. Uh, I don't work for Nalco Water, so I can't really speak upon uh, what's happening on your side of the river. <laughs> but I can speak about what I cover, and I see that digital tools and digitalization of emissions reporting is essential. Mm -hmm. I, I recently wrote about sustainability data and that creating these yearly emissions reports are going to be an increased responsibility for organizations across the globe. And I'm sorry, but a lot of the times when you have human interaction with data collection, it kind of disrupts the data integrity. So in decreasing human interaction and human um, collection of data sources will increase your data integrity. So digitalizing and automating that data collection is essential to having the most uh, transparent and uh, emissions reporting reports that can be audited and audited and you won't be surprised when those results come back. Yeah, that makes sense. I think emissions reporting, I mean, reporting what you've done is also going to be really important too. Right. And that, what those tools will help with that. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much, Riley. I really appreciate your time. This was a great conversation. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your work and hopefully I'll see you next year at ARC. Sounds good. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>